Samsung's back with another refresh and this time it's the premium A70 that's getting the refresh in the form of the Galaxy A70s and Samsung is pricing it a whole 9 rupees over the A70. So what's with this? What's the deal? What's Samsung up to? Is there something innovative or unique here? Let's first take the phone out of its box and then get a close look. Hey guys, Ash here from c 4 e Tech and if you do end up lacking what you see, then go ahead, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. So guys, this is the box the Galaxy A70s comes in. To the front, we have a picture of the phone, the Samsung and A70s logos, more branding to the sides, very similar to what we've been seeing with the other S refreshes. To the back, we have some spec highlights, the Infinity U display, triple cameras, super fast charging. The top contains the pricing sticker. This is the MSRP, of course. And the bottom, we have the IMEI number here. And it also mentions the color of the phone, Prism Crush Red. All this is pretty standard stuff, pretty much what we've come to expect from Samsung. No surprises here. So let's now take our unboxing knife, cut through the seals on both sides and open up the box. Once opened, the first thing we see here, that's another box on the top lid. This one contains the warranty card, regional lock guide as well as the quick start guide. Samsung's included a soft case which has always is a welcome addition. Let's set it aside and get to the Galaxy A70s itself. Removing the plastic wrap and the plastic on the sides. This back, this pattern, it reminds me of the A50s. Seems to be a design language that Samsung's following for the S versions of the Galaxy A series. And that's a weird thing to say, isn't it? The S versions of the A series. Anyway, we have the same diamond design, but with the red color here. It looks different. Let me turn the phone on, put it in its case and set it aside for the time being. We then have a 25 watt fast charger. This one has a type C port. Then there's a pair of in -ear earphones, a USB type C to type C cable. And finally, this image ejector pin. So with the box contents out of the way, let's now get a close look at the Galaxy A70s. Now there's only two things that's really changed since the A70 and one of them we've already seen. Now that's the back. It's now that diamond design. It looks nice. It's still plastic though. The height, the weight, the thickness, you know, that's all identical, no change whatsoever. So ergonomically, the phone feels exactly the way the A70 did in hand. Now the other change, that's the camera, not cameras. The selfie camera is the same, the secondary and the third sensor, they are the same. It's the primary sensor that's changed. Instead of the 32 megapixel f1.7 that we got with the A70, instead we get a 64 megapixel f1.8. And in case you were wondering, yes, this is Samsung's GW1 sensor, the same one we've been seeing on the Realme XT and the Redmi Note 8 Pro. So let's now take a look at a few samples, shall we? Starting with indoor shots, this sensor takes 16 megapixel pictures by default. I would have loved to compare results with the A70's 32 megapixel shooter, but sadly, I don't have that phone with me anymore. The quality here, it seems quite impressive. The A70 S, it seems to do a good job. With other brands, we've seen the GW1's results be a little bland. Not here, the images are quite rich. There's ample detail, even indoors. Now, scene detection, it causes for a pump up in saturation. Outdoors, this is even more noticeable. These flower shots, they came out really well, in my humble opinion. The bokeh on this one, it was pretty good. The background blurring, it's quite pleasant, I'd say. Now jumping to the 64 megapixel mode causes a slight loss in dynamic range, but even that's not something to worry about. As in, in this image itself, I'd say the dynamic range is still pretty good. Remember this was shot at noon, look at the shadows, the sun's right overhead. It's still excellent, right? And there's quite a lot of detail being brought back up. This is not what we saw with other implementations of the Samsung GW1. I don't think other phones performed quite as well. Even in situations like this, the shadows are not getting crushed. Now here's another example that demonstrates the same. In this instance, this is the regular 16 megapixel shot, excellent dynamic range, crisp. The 64 megapixel mode, it loses out on dynamic range, yes, but zoom in and the leaves of the tree, they hold a lot more detail. So that's there. 
There is a night mode that's included, but I've not really tested that yet. I'll do that if I actually review this phone. Now the other sensors are pretty much the same. The 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, it's amongst the best ultra wides for the segment. It retains an excellent amount of detail for an ultra wide, and what's most impressive is the dynamic range. Usually, ultra wides are where we see dark shadows and blown out skylines. I'm really happy to see blue skies and bright shadows here. Samsung's done very well, they've not really compromised with the ultra wide. Now, talking about impressive dynamic range, the selfie camera continues impressing on that front too. It's the same 32 megapixel f2 from the A70. In fact, everything else up to this point is exactly the same from the A70. The portraits came out well too, live focus worked. For the rear camera, the depth sensor helps out. I mean, for a live focus, just like with the A70. So with this camera, we can shoot 4K 30 FPS video. So that's the max. And 4K 30 FPS, there's no stabilization here, but it's pretty detailed, it's rich. Uh, the quality of the footage itself is pretty good. Stabilization kicks in at 1080p 30, but at 1080p 30, there is a bit of focus hunting that happens. I'm not sure if it's gonna be captured in this sample footage, but in quite a few samples that I shot, there was a bit of focus hunting and the footage isn't very detailed, but it's pretty stable. If you want more stability, then we can jump to the super stable option and this is almost like shooting with a gimbal with the phone mounted on a gimbal and it's very stable but then the detailing does go for a toss uh, we do lose detail but it's excellent excellent stability so but those times where stability is of highest priority you could probably switch to this with the ultra wide camera we can also shoot 1080p and this is stabilized footage so this is pretty good samsung's doing a good job with the sensor with the selfie camera we can do 1080p video this is not stabilized footage so this is selfie video. So how do you guys think this works? Let me know in the comments below. And that's pretty much it. But for those who have not really seen the A70, or maybe you've forgotten, here's a quick refresher on words remain the same. The display is 6.7 inches. It's an Infinity U panel. So that's an AMOLED panel with a Full HD plus resolution. It's pretty much what you'd expect from an AMOLED from Samsung. It's bright, it's punchy, it's lively, vivid, colorful. It's an excellent panel. It's not something that's ever gonna disappoint you. It's covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass for protection. For the placements, power and volume, secondary mic, triple card tray, headphone jack, type C, primary mic and speaker. Now the type C port here, it supports 25 watt charging and that's the charger that's included in the box. The battery capacity is a very healthy 4500 milliamp hour and it's a Snapdragon 675 chip powering all of this. Now 675 at this price, that's gonna be a hard sell, but it's Samsung, you aren't paying for the chip, you're paying for the Samsung branding, you're paying for the Samsung experience, for the Samsung cameras, servers and whatnot. The base variant has six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, 2899 is what Samsung's charging for it, nine rupees over what the A70 is selling for. The A128 variant is priced 2000 rupees more, and I don't think anyone, and by that I mean anyone, should actually buy that. The two extra gigs of RAM are not gonna make any different difference whatsoever. None at all. That's just a marketing thing to increase profit margin. So please don't even consider buying that. The six gig variant should do well enough. There's one UI built on top of Android 9 Pie, and we've seen a lot of one UI, so I'm not gonna focus on it much. The experience is pretty smooth and mature. Samsung is not in your face with anything here. Not even Bixby, it's there. If you wanna use it, you can. The support for the full version of Samsung Pay, which is something I really like. There's FM radio and in-display fingerprint scanner. That's one that's not changed much either. So it's still quite slow. Face unlock returns and works as well as it did on the A70. On the camera side of things, while well, Samsung continues to add marketable features like scene detection and night modes, basics like the Pro Mode are still omitted and that's sad. This one, it comes with the depreciated Pro Mode and that, in my opinion, is just, is just criminal on a phone that's camera focused, that sells at 28.9, I mean, triple nine. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really disappointing. Now, is this a price anyone should consider paying for a Snapdragon 675? After all, the 675 is a chip that we've been seeing on phones priced uh, at half of this, uh, right? Well, if a Samsung phone is what you want, 
then maybe you could consider this. If offline is where you're shopping, then maybe you could consider this. But online, if you aren't brand conscious, then this might seem way too expensive for what is being offered here. A few generations back, if you think about it, for this price, Samsung was offering glass pills, water resistance. Now, how do we go back from there? How do we go backwards? How do we go down to plastic? I don't really understand. But anyway, what do you think? Uh, should I review the A70s? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what do you think about the A70s. Uh, is it good? Are you impressed with this camera? The, I mean, I feel the 64 megapixel GW1. Samsung's done a very good job with it. What do you think about that? Overall, what do you think about the A70s as a package? Do you feel it's priced a little too high? Or is it okay for, for it being a Samsung phone? Uh, let me know everything, anything and everything you think about this phone in the comments below. And what other videos would you like to see about the A70s? Also, let me know that in the comments and I'll try to make that happen. And I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.